Hi, Apple just released macOS Sonoma and it's ridiculous how many genuinely useful new features they've added to make our MacBooks and desktops so much better. From app improvements and desktop decluttering to stickers, cameras, widgets and gaming modes and the rest, this has to be my favourite macOS update in forever. So stick around and I'll show you the best new features you should know about on your Mac and how to use them. I'm Simon, this is Better Creating and this is how to make the most of your MacBook with Mac Sonoma. Oh, and thank you as well to me for sponsoring my own video with my icon packs. More later. So first up, to update your Mac OS, click on the Apple symbol in the top corner, click on about this Mac, and you should be able to see the Mac OS that you are currently using. If you click for more info, that takes you into the system settings, but you can also see that information. And then you can click on software update to get your update. So Sonoma is available for a range of Macs from 2017 onwards. So pause the video here if you want to check if yours is good to go. Update and bano down down down. Hi, Sonoma. That was terrible, wasn't it? I couldn't resist, sorry. Okay, the first thing you'll notice when you download the update is the awesome set of wallpapers and lock screen options. Now, I love these new dynamic options that just gently animate when you're in screensaver mode. Now, I know that you might think this is a bit of a simple one to start with, what kind of update is this? But trust me, this is really great and worth touching on before we get into the meatier subjects that are worth waiting for. So these screensavers animate and then settle into your desktop as you turn the computer on. How cool is that? So if you go into system settings, you'll find hundreds of new wallpaper options, including these dynamic wallpapers that will essentially move and adjust um, to the different kind of night and day modes. But these landscapes are particularly cool because of that animation feature. So I've actually replaced this, which was a kind of a nice little custom wallpaper that I found on the internet, which I liked in my space and now selected that and that's my wallpaper. But there are a ton of great options across cityscapes, underwater. Um, you'll even find some of these um, aerial shots of Earth that you might well recognize from Apple TV. And you've even got shuffle areas where you can shuffle between different types, which is really great. So make sure you enable some of these because I just can't stop doing that, basically. We should probably talk about these, right? Let's do it. So next up is new widgets and a secret bonus. So the widget. On the Mac, we've had widgets for years, since Steve Jobs, but there are now far more integrated and adaptable versions of them. And there's a little bonus here. First of all, you can add widgets by right-clicking or double-clicking on the screen, going to edit, edit widgets, and you'll have this little widget menu that comes up where you can drop different things in from different apps into the space. So if I want to put weather, I can look there and go, oh, I want to drop that weather in down the bottom. Now, I'm obviously in dark mode and you can see them on the finder, uh, but what's really cool is you're able to move them around. You can see here they have uh, the ability to just shift around and fall into little spaces where you want to leave them, which I really like. They kind of align with each other. What's even cooler though is the fact that you can also adapt the color of them. So the first thing to say is that if I went into the dock, you see how they fade into monochrome. So it kind of, you know, if I jump into Notion, they just kind of sit in the background and it's not going to kind of overwhelm me uh, for my focus. I'm able to kind of see the page that I'm looking at. But if we go into settings and desktop and dock, you'll see the options for the widgets and you can set the widget style here. You could set them to be permanently monochrome, which is, my taste really, I think they look great like that. So then whatever you do, they'll stay like that. And what's lovely about this monochrome look is it actually kind of blends and adapts to your wallpaper. But you can also actually interact directly with certain widgets. You can now actually interact, for example, with reminders to tick off tasks in the widgets. We can also change the size of the widgets directly in the home screen. Uh, that's just by right clicking and go to large, go to small. So it's it's much easier now to kind of manage these rather than delete them and add another one. What's really cool though, I absolutely love the way that the widgets will fade into the background uh, when you bring up a an app. But I've got to say, I'm keeping mine in monochrome though because I think it's rather nice. Now there is though that little secret bonus here. If we uh, two finger click on the screen or right click, go to edit widget, edit widgets again, in here, you'll be able to actually find apps that aren't on your computer. And that is because you're able to see iPhone or iPad widgets on the Mac. 
So Apple is using continuity to offer other iOS apps on desktop, particularly cool because they are not actually installed on the Mac. They can take a moment to load, probably because it's pulling data from a nearby device that's in range, but it's really cool as a fast reference for saying, having Spotify up on your computer when you don't actually have Spotify on the computer. Pretty cool. If you go into the desktops and docks in settings, you'll see under widgets, use iPhone widgets, and it will allow you to pull those into the system. Okay, next, some awesome decluttering focus features in Sonoma. But first, whilst we're on the subject of minimal monochrome design, would you like to make your iPhone or iPad setup look like this? Now seems like the right moment to explain my terrible sponsorship joke earlier and talk about a little piece of design joy for you Apple users that I reckon you'll love. These are the icons from my iOS and Notion design packs, a complete set of minimal icons in black and white and transparent gradient sets that allow you to use the native Apple shortcut cut colors to color your perfect custom iPad look. Check them out via the link in the description and make sure you check out my guide video on how to customize your iPad or iPhone with them as well. You should be aware that the process of customizing in iOS 16 or 17 is more of a pleasing hack than a plug and play product. But if you have a few hours to enjoy getting this look like this, jump across to bettercreating.com after the video. And uh, many thanks to, well, me for sponsoring the video. Yeah, I know, the joke sucks. I've done it before. So along with the new Mac widgets, you now have much greater control over your desktop with the new stage manager and kind of desktop decluttering focus settings. Now, it's great to see we have more customization over the desktop and we can set whether we see items and widgets on the desktop. So at the moment, they're all set and you can see all of my rubbish on the desktop. It can be, let's be honest, a little bit cluttered. So if we go into system settings, and desktop and dock, we can then click this button, show items, and it will hide them. We can also hide them in Stage Manager, and I can also hide widgets on the desktops if I wanted to. So if we have this click wallpaper to reveal desktop set to always, which it will be defaulted, controversial one for some people, we'll talk about that in a minute. When we are in a normal desktop view, it can be completely clean, and then when I click on it, it can reveal everything within what is called Stage Manager, right? So I can then see the different items, and edit them and then come back out. But if we didn't want to it to look like that, for example, I might want to just set my widgets to be on the desktop, but only see the items, so essentially all those files in stage manager mode, I can do it like that. So I can hide this, have a clean desktop, and then jump in to see the files. I think that's a really great option. I love this particularly because I spend so much time filming my desktop uh, for this channel, but also because I like to be able to focus and not be distracted by things. So I'm actually going to set mine to only see widgets and items in Stage Manager. So when I am working, it's just nice and clean like this. So let's say I just have Notion up, I'm working in my Life OS. If I want to check something, I click on the desktop, I can jump to it, click again, and it brings me back. And that is a bit of a controversial feature to jump between those different views. Or you can have that for only in Stage Manager mode, which is a good option to kind of disable it. If you click only in Stage Manager and don't have Stage Manager turned on, it will mean that clicking on the desktop doesn't do anything. So that's useful to know. Speaking of which, if you wanna use Stage Manager, you could set up Stage Manager, and then we have that nice option to jump between different modes. I can see all of my items in Stage Manager when I'm in it. So hey, it's up to you if you wanna use Stage Manager. There are some big changes to Safari with profiles and web apps. Safari might be about to win my attention back from Chrome, yet yeah, don't hate me, I use Chrome. But the reason is there are two updates that could be for me real productivity game changers. Number one, we now have the option for dedicated profiles in the browser. So you can have one for work and for example here, I can open up a new personal profile. You can go to Safari, manage profiles and create new profiles in the system. Different symbols can be created, you can name them. And what's great is each profile has its own dedicated history, cookies, tab groups, favorites, and you can just quickly jump between modes. Love it. Now the second feature is the ability to turn any web page into a desktop app. For example, bring up Free Sound, where I often get sound effects from. If we go into File and go Add to Dock, I can turn Free Sound into a web app. We can now see some web apps I've created. It will actually open this up like an app with a 
simplified toolbar, it even supports push notifications and looks much more like a normal app. I'm using this to create my Mac app for my sales platform and managing my newsletter. Um, I've even made one for YouTube. Nice. So there are some great new video features that work across FaceTime and other third-party video platforms like Zoom on Macs that run Apple Silicon, M1 and up for Sonoma. My favorite has to be presentation mode that shows you floating in a window when you are sharing your screen in FaceTime. This should be available for you if you're using say a studio display or maybe continuity camera with your iPhone that's already existed before Sonoma, but is a really easy thing to set up. For more features like portrait, studio lighting, and mic modes, you can use this system. But I've also discovered that the features also work with a lot of external webcams, like my 4K Opal C1, which have even more features that you can use to tune your video. You just click on this little button up the top, and whatever camera you wanna select or app you wanna select, you'll see the options that are available for you. The most fun part of this system, though, has to be the AI reactions, such as thumbs up, it'll do a little bubble, thumbs down, and even celebrations. See, I told you that Max Sonoma was ridiculous. So something I've been super surprised by are the new keyboard features, particularly the inline predictive text upgrades we now have that will auto-complete text for you with the tap of the spacebar. It works very well, but my favorite is the option to combine dictation and typing together as you write. It's all linked into the same predictive text feature. Now on the subject of dictation, I found a feature that is actually amazing under accessibility, and it's called personal voice. Now, this unbelievably allows you to create your own personal voice by reading 50 phrases aloud, which is gonna take about 15 minutes. It will generate you a personal voice, and then you can use it to communicate through live, as live speech on something like Zoom or FaceTime. So it means that you can actually type to speak. But I'm also wondering whether we might actually be able to use this for voiceovers. Possible? Now, Apple are now helping you take gaming to the next level on the Mac with the new game mode. This sounds really cool, actually. Essentially, it prioritizes the gaming app that you're in for the use of the GPU and CPU, and apparently will give noticeably better response rates and most importantly, perhaps, lower latency for wireless controllers and your AirPods. Now, this is super useful for those of you on, say, MacBook Airs to get the most from the computer when you're gaming. This only works with Mac Silicon computers, you see where it's going, and selected game controllers. So double check that you've got the right one. Oh, and don't forget stickers. Okay, this one is super silly, but let's be honest, happiness essential. You can now turn the subject of a photograph or image into a sticker and add it to your messages or whatever. 
I love it. It's pretty pointless, but it's cool to do. Now, there are a ton of great features added in Sonoma. Let me know what you found that you like that's not in my list in the comments. Now, what's great is that many of them overlap with the recent iOS and iPadOS 17 updates, including things like great ways to insert PDFs in Apple Notes or edit them in files, stage manager updates and all the rest. So I recommend you watch my video on the latest iPadOS features here next, or if you fancy a little improvement to your Mac desk setup, watch my recent Mac accessories tour down here. It would of course be awesome if you subscribed and turned on the notifications here if you haven't yet. Amazing if you left a like. And with that, I'd better get back to creating.